A great video game can be defined by many things, be it an iconic protagonist, great music, impressive visuals, a nuanced plot, and so on. One of the more important aspects is to build a boss fight the player is never going to forget, one that'll be discussed for years or decades to come. These 10 bosses, drawn from different eras and genres, represent those you need to beat at least once before you die. Whether you play the rest of the game or not, these bosses guarantee a slice of gaming history at its finest. Before we begin though, these of course aren't the only 10 you need to beat, so leave your suggestions below as to who else needs to perish before you do. I'm Rich from Mod Culture, and these are 10 video game bosses you must defeat before you die. Number 10, Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime. Beating the titular Metroid Prime at the end of the game requires taking her down in two epic battles. The first of which is in a spider-like shell form and requires players to use relevant beams according to which colour Prime turns. Bear in mind this also allows Prime to deliver a multitude of devastating attacks which require pitch perfect timing to avoid. At the conclusion of this fight, Prime leaves the shell and the true final boss fight begins. Things get tougher as Prime shifts through the various spectrums requiring players to use different visors to keep track of what's going on. The goal to victory is to wait until Prime throws a puddle of Phazon on the floor, allowing you to stand in it and use your Phazon beam and eventually destroy the beast. It's far from the most challenging fight on this list, but it's beyond epic, and the two-part nature of this battle makes it all that more intense. Number 9, The Boss, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. A classic Metal Gear Solid boss fight comes at the conclusion of Snake Eater, with Naked Snake facing down his old mentor, the boss, in a remote lily field, making for one of the all-time greatest cinematic video game standoffs. The key to winning this fight is typically engaging with the boss in close quarters combat, while avoiding her own attacks, as well as fire from her trusty gun, the Patriot. Due to the nature of the boss's white camouflage, using thermal goggles is a great way to make the fight easier for yourself, and to eventually guarantee your victory. But that's not all. As she hands over the Philosopher's Legacy to Naked Snake, the player then has one final task, to end the boss's life with one shot from the Patriot. It's an incredibly haunting, groundbreaking moment in video game lore, one that heightened the emotional intensity and importance by forcing the player to pull the trigger. This then leads to the devastating reveal that, in fact, the boss was not the traitor we thought her to be, and she was working undercover to steal the Philosopher's Legacy and bring it back to the US. Mind-blowing doesn't even begin to describe it. Number 8. Nihilanth, Half-Life the Nihilanth is the leader of all the nasties that invade Black Mesa during the events of the brilliant Half-Life, and the finale of the game sees Gordon Freeman travelling to this alien world Zen to do battle with this beast once and for all. As a whole, Half-Life is pretty challenging as far as an FPS goes, the Nihilanth being the zenith of this difficulty, as the master alien fires energy balls at you which can result in a very quick demise if you're not paying proper attention. After working your way through some challenges the Nihilanth hurls your way, you have to dive atop this giant monster's head and destroy its brain with whatever weapons you have left. This will immediately lead to the famous dilemma G-Man presents to you, accept his job or die. Number 7, Bowser, Super Mario 64. Bowser is the final boss of video games. Any of Bowser's appearances could have been put on this list, but for the sake of nostalgia and for its importance in the world of video games, this one's going to Super Mario 64. We've destroyed the platform underneath him. We've punched him in the face with a boxing glove hat. We've come toe to toe with Meowser. No, I'm not kidding on that one. But best of all, we've run circles around him, grabbed him by the tail and flung him into space. Super Mario 64's build to this boss fight is of course in itself a masterpiece, but this boss fight is the way to rescue the princess. Suck it, King Cooper. Number six, Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson's punch out. Frequently hailed as one of the most challenging boss fights in video game history, the final opponent in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is, surprisingly, Tyson himself, a hulking beast of a man with a record of 99 to 0, all knockouts, who will most likely make mincemeat out of you the first 20 times you play this match. The key to beating Tyson is that it's all about patience and reflexes, especially during the start of the match, in which Tyson flings his signature dynamite punches at you in an attempt to quickly bring the match to a close. Though most of Tyson's attacks can be anticipated by a visual cue, sometimes he'll just jab at you out of nowhere, so it's best to both keep on the move and keep dodging while getting jabs in where possible. Eventually this approach will knock Tyson out, or you can hope for a win by decision, but either way you will have probably smashed through quite a few controllers first. Number 5, M. Bison, Street Fighter 2. After fighting through every other character in Street Fighter 2, you have to take down the final boss, M. Bison, who naturally is the most infuriatingly difficult of the lot. 
His Psycho Crusher attack in particular has caused many defeats, and generally, playing the defensive is a much easier way to win than going outright on the offensive. Bison can reverse the vast majority of your attacks if you even get slightly overzealous, but take a cautious approach and you'll find yourself slowly whittling his health down. Keep it up and you'll have a good chance of winning, bringing an end to one of the greatest beat-em-ups in the history of video games. Beat Bison and consider yourself a master of this classic brawler. Number 4. Sephiroth, Final Fantasy VII after dozens of hours of working your way through Final Fantasy VII, the final boss is certainly a doozy worthy of everything that came before. Beating the game requires defeating Sephiroth in three boss fights that occur in direct sequence of one another. The first, Bizarro Sephiroth, isn't too much of a challenge as long as you focus your attacks on his body, though he tends to heal himself to the effect of thousands of HP every round, so you need to make sure your most powerful attacks are prepped to go. The second stage, safe for Sephiroth, is the part most people struggle with. His stats vary depending on the conditions of your party, and one of the most frustrating elements is the supernova attack he performs, which doesn't just deal massive damage, but results in a super long 2 minute animation which can't be skipped. Basically, you need to throw everything you have at him now, as this is the final battle you can actually lose in the game. It's really bloody difficult, that's for sure. Finally, part 3 cannot be lost. You just need to execute Omnislash, and both the fight and the game will be over. We did it for Eris. Number 3. Ganon, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time And you thought Ganondorf was a badass. At the end of Ocarina of Time, he uses the Triforce to transform into the giant form known as Ganon. To make matters worse, Ganon knocks the Master Sword out of your reach during the pre-fight cutscene, though on the plus side, at least you have the Navi to give you a little help. The key to getting through the first stage of the battle is to move fast and keep attacking his tail, after which point the flames keeping you from the Master Sword will die down and you can go and grab it. His sword attacks cause ridiculous levels of damage, forcing you to keep moving, hitting his tail whenever you can and firing light arrows at him. Once Ganon is near death, Zelda will hold him still while you stab him in the face and win the fight. Looking back, it's not a particularly difficult fight, but it's easily one of the best bosses from the Zelda franchise, perhaps in part due to nostalgia and also due to its, at the time, revolutionary 3D graphics. Number 2. Ornstein and Smell, Dark Souls any boss in Dark Souls is enough to put you through your paces. Not only do you have to damage bosses as much as possible, you need to dodge and preempt some of the most life bar draining attacks in video games. With Ornstein and Smell, you have to do that twice over at the same damn time. With Ornstein's speedy lightning attacks and Smell's slow but powerful pummels, you've got the best or worst of both worlds to contend with when up against these two. However, once you defeat one, the other becomes more powerful and regain all of their health. Ornstein grows to twice his size and Smell gains the ability to use lightning. When you finally defeat both of these monstrosities, 50,000 souls are yours. There is no finer feeling. And number one, Psycho Mantis, Metal Gear Solid. The Mantis fight in Metal Gear Solid is one of the all-time trickiest boss fights, especially in 1998 before people were savvy enough to use the internet for guides. Players knew something weird was up at the start of the fight when Mantis would read players' memory cards to see what other Konami games they've played and comment accordingly, and also shake the PS1 controller by way of his mind control. It was a fun gimmick to set us up for the fight, but the strangest was yet to come. Once the fight starts, players will be dismayed that attacking Mantis does not work because you can read your every move, and the solution is to unplug the controller and plug it into the second controller slot, making Mantis unable to read your mind. From then on, the battle is a piece of cake, but as a kid who was bemused by this for a long time, it was the holy grail of tough boss battles. It's also sure proof of Hideo Kojima's demented genius. And that's our list. As I've said, these aren't the only 10 you must beat, so let me know down below what other bosses players need to sink their teeth and sharp objects into. As always, WhatCulture.com is a good source of video game and boss like goodies, and WhatCulture Gaming on Twitter is also known as the final boss of the internet. I'm Rich from WhatCulture, and I'd barely be a mini boss. Let's face it. <laughs> oh, 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 wasn't that something? Don't forget to like, share and subscribe below and also the people who made this lovely video, they're appearing right here. But if you're thinking to yourself, I want to see more content, Jules, then why not look above my head, as there probably is some. I don't know. I can't see it. Until next time.